Hello, everybody. Welcome to Perpetube, repurposing social media spaces, and welcome back to a number of uh, pipeline students and mentors. Hello to my children who are in the audience and members of our faculty. We are going to have um, a live event today as part of our show, and with the um, I'm so glad to welcome Desiree Munoz, who is a member of the Ohlone Rumson tribe, which is a tribe local to this region, and her mother, Brenda Munoz, and her grandfather, Tony Cerda, who are here with us as well. So she's gonna to speak to you for five or 10 minutes, and then we'll have a conversation. And as you all know, that will go on to YouTube um, as part of our show, and then people all around the world will get a chance to hear some of her thoughts. So thank you very much for coming. It's really delightful to have you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad that it's you guys and not nobody bigger than what it is because I would have been a little bit nervous, but at least I met all you guys yesterday. I'm so glad and, and glad that I know Krista too and Monica, the old timers from for like three years now. <laughs> but thank you though. Um, I'm so excited to be here and to let you guys know about the Ohlone's too and, and uh, to share with you guys a little bit about the culture and my regalia and what we do and where we originally came from because originally we're not from here. Originally, um, back in the old days I should say, we were from San Francisco. We were all the way from Big Sur to San Francisco and that was our territory, basically. And when we were there, we were very humble people. We never fought. We never really did anything out of the ordinary. And um, basically, our lives were good until a certain point when the Spanish arrived and, you know, all the gold rushing happened and all that stuff. And, you know, we came down south, and when we came down south, that's where we're here now. You know, I'm here talking to you guys. And when um, when that happened, we migrated down, and they, you know, because that's when the missions were happening. When the missions were happening, we didn't want to be a part of that because at the missions, we were told not to wear my regalia. We were told not to speak our language, and that's why to this day we are reclaiming our language. And we're picking it up, you know. It's, it's nice to know our language. I'm very happy about learning it. And um, another thing was, you know, we couldn't practice what we'd done for hundreds and thousands of years before that. We couldn't practice that. And so now that we have it again, we come to do stuff like this to show you guys that we're still here and we still have our language and we still have our regalia and our dances and songs and traditions. And you know, we come and promote, like not promote it, but we come here to show people that we're still here because they're saying Ohlone's do not exist. But we do exist because I'm here talking to you. My grandpa's right there, my mom. So, you know, everyone's here. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we uh, did recently was that the federal government, you know, they're finally recognizing about our tribe and, and um, you know, they uh, required us some land and moss landing. And that's part of one of the original places where, you know, we came from part of it, right? And so when we were, th uh, when we got the land, we were happy because we just finished um, our four day ceremony, not four days, I should say nine day ceremony for four years. And that's when our men that are 12, that's when they're becoming men and they have to be committed to this and they're on their vision quest. And they don't eat or drink nothing for four days and for four nights, and that's including water. And they give them themselves for us as a sacrifice and they're becoming men as well. So when that happens, um, a few of my cousins, they went up, there was 12 of them and they were committed and my little brother was one of them. And they did it all, all four days. And when they're on their vision quest in our tribe, there is, you know, there is such thing as uh, healers and medicine men and wingmen especially. And one of my cousins, two of my cousins had a vision of an eagle and the rest of my cousins had a vision of a bear. 
So they they sacrificed themselves, and now we have our bear ceremony there. And we had it in San, in San Francisco, like first, like what is it? Um, uh, Fresno. Fresno is where it was, and it was at um, Coyote Hills. I don't know if you guys heard of it, but it's a really, really nice place that they have um, still, but I think they're going to be closing it, and we closed it out basically there. They had that place since I was born, since like 92, 91, and they let us have that certain spot, a little campsite for our boys to do that. So it was really neat to see the boys do that and we closed it out with them closing that place down and it's been a while for 19 years you know and it was so sad to see it go but it went off in a good way because I was like there's a museum there to show people what natural uh you know the uh, how do you say the aboriginals of that land were there and who was there first and it was us and it was so nice to see that place running and for them to let us do the ceremony there so when we did the ceremony there, they really liked it a lot. So it was a nine-day thing. And so now that we finished it out, we're going to be doing it at the land that they just gave us in Monterey. So now that we're in Monterey Bay, we're going to start a whole new four years. So now that we're going to start a whole new four years there, we're going to have a whole new group of men, you know, uh, from all ages and the ones that are just starting out. And they're all going to be starting a new adventure we're starting at a new place just like anything we do it's always in four i don't know why it always happens to be like that because we had our little pow our powwow our gathering start behind the office you know for four years before that in chino for a while and then now we're having at the park at my grandpa tony Serta's park for another four years and we just finished the four-year ceremony and you know, San Francisco and Coyote Hills, and now we're starting it in Monterey Bay. So that's another good thing that we're doing. Um, so that's, like, something that we're doing to, like, connect us to Monterey Bay, to keep us alive in our traditions and stuff, and to let all you guys know what we do. And really, uh, what else is there to say about what we do now nothing really there's nothing else to say and just I'll explain my regalia but that'll be after because I know you guys are going to have questions about certain things and then I'll do it so does anybody have any questions about anything anybody any of you guys no yeah oh hold on hold on yeah hold on hold on sorry I'm walking slow Thank you, Desiree. Thank you for explaining. Is there something that young women go through um, also? I know the young men do the bear ceremony, but is there something that you go through or something that you learn at a certain age um, in your tribe that, that makes you into a woman, like where you get to, to become a woman? Um, there's some things that I hear. I know that for sure we don't sacrifice ourselves. We don't like do what the guys do we don't go fasting but we do when, when we get to a certain age every woman starts their menstrual cycle and when they start their menstrual cycle our our ancestors we can't be around the fire we can't be like you know cooking for everybody because when you're cooking food for some people or for anybody you're putting good medicine and that's why you want to be happy when you're cooking you don't want a stomach ache you know that's something that's going into your body so you don't want nothing bad when you're cooking you want to be happy when you're doing it so we couldn't you know we can't be in ceremony or anything like that so when that happens we used to go to another site and when we used to go to our another site, we used to go there once it started and until it finished. So I know that's kind of weird. It's like you're away from your family. I bet you it feels nice nowadays. You're away from your kids and everybody, you know. So I bet you that's nice. But, you know, back in the day, I just, you know, that's something that us women did. We mostly, you know, we did the cooking and the cleaning, the gathering of everything and everybody making us all one. So that's just one thing I know we did. But as far as I know about fasting, there wasn't nothing about fasting. There's other people in tribes, though, other women that fast for, like, certain things. But not us, not that I know of. But that's a good question, though. Thank you. 